Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and happy to be back with Workbench Wednesday. Uh, today you'd best strap in Sunny Jim because we've got a long one for you, at least potentially. Uh, I'm doing a one day build on a project I've been uh, meaning to get to for quite some time. Uh, what we have uh, is an old Pico G scale uh, shell station. Uh, this is actually going to be a gift for my mother-in-law for Christmas. Um, something that uh, they picked up in Germany uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I can't say how old the model kit is, but only because I don't know. But, um, well, it's old enough that it came with the uh, old bottles of um, the really thick Uhu glue um, as the only glue in here, because the kit predates cyanoacrylite uh, super glue. So, yeah, it's um, at least older than the Star Wars movies. <laughs> So that's pretty great. Um, I am excited to do it, especially because, uh, I'm make sure you guys can see this part. This is the part, I mean, you've got to love it. I mean, you look at this great picture. Realistically aged. Let's see what we get. So I had been asked woo, to block the camera with a box. Simply to assemble the model. But the to me was that once I got started and opened up the box, I saw the realistically aged components. And I couldn't just give this to someone because if I was going to build it, I, I no, there's no, no. So we're gonna fix this. Let me get this box out of the way. We set the roof tiles on the floor instructions on the desk and prop this open to get started now the kit itself uh includes this uh 1930 style uh, gas pump or 1930 style gas pump excuse me and i'm gonna skip it uh the layout that uh Uh, my in-laws put together uh, is more modern than the 1930s. Uh, if she decides she wants it, I'll build it in a second round. But today I'm going to focus on the building itself. Which also, to give you an idea of how old this kit is, um, it does not come with decals. It comes with these stickers. It comes with stickers that you have to cut out because they're not die cut. <laughs> um, and again, Pico, great brand, wonderful kits, good reputation. This really was top of the line when it was built or manufactured excuse me so all i managed to do when i started was look at the kit uh, i have not had a chance to start dry fitting or anything like that um and it looks like they want us to start with windows because again it's just the assembly so let's find the materials here clear styrene should be everything that I need. Yeah, so you put the uh, stickers on the shell sign and cut it out. Find a way to fix that too. I don't know if it's gonna be a uh, freehand or what, but we'll find a way to fix that too. All right, put these in the dead space. So it looks like the only reason for this uh, is because again, realistically aged, look at that wonderful wash they put on here, right? You can see that nice. Uh, uh, probably isopropyl and in, uh, uh, India ink. Um, I'd be willing to bet uh, bet a good dollar on that. Um, and yeah, they're just slathering on a wash, and that's our realistically aged piece. So uh, the only reason for having us do the uh, window sub assemblies is to get the red in there, so that you have the red frame and the white wall, um, and then put the windows in. This is the gas pump. Yeah, see, here's our instructions for cutting out the stickers. That's great. It's funny, most of the time I uh, have friends that get their hands on old kits. It's usually old uh, Grenadier or Ralpartha kits, uh, the kind that you actually have to wear good gloves with because they're actually made out of so much lead you could get sick handling them. Uh, and they're horrible, right? Big gaps and, and uh, sculpting issues galore and always a lot of work. Whereas when I get my hands on old plastic kits like this, I, they're generally great. I love them. 
All right, so the rest is just the uh, floor and the roof panel there, uh, this thing here. So let's get started on the walls because we're ready to go. All right, wall panels. Wall panels don't need any sort of assembly or anything like that, so that makes it nice and simple. Um, question for me, though, is how visible... Not there. Not there. How about I look at a picture? Ah, slopes to the back. So this should go here. Yep. All right, so that's going to go there. That's going to go there. So one of the other challenges for me personally that I'm only discovering right this second um, is how visible it's going to be inside uh, with the windows and everything. And I feel like I also cannot send this off with all the ejector pins and all of that. I just can't. So you're going to have to make some uh, drywall. I'm going to have to make an interior now. All right. So, um, and would you be so kind from the second drawer of the Alex to hand me some flat plastic art? I didn't grab it because I didn't know I was going to need it. <laughs> so, yep. Should be a packet of OT3. Yep. OT3. All right. So I'm just grabbing some really thin plastic art. This is 0 0.3 millimeters. Um, making this up as I go now. See if this glue is still working today. One of the things you'll hear me uh, say a lot is cyanoacrylate. Uh, it is the proper chemical name for what we usually call super glue. And the reason I make a point of calling it cyanoacrylate is not all super glue is cyanoacrylate. I've even run into brands that says contains no cyanoacrylate. Well, I don't know what you're using, but there's nothing super about it. I also find it just it's helpful to get used to the uh, chemical names because if brands differ, you know, particularly if you're one of those uh, painters that likes to travel and you're trying to find something in another country, um, they have a different name. Whereas cyanoacrylate is cyanoacrylate. Okay. I'm going to fix my foolish mistake here. <laughs> I made it difficult for me to get out of here. So I'm going to push it over with a pen. Set it over here. One of my 23 hobby knives. Somehow it's always this one. Probably because I grabbed this one on purpose every time. I've had this one the longest, so for whatever reason, it's my favorite because I've been using the handle that long that it's just, I don't know. That's my hobby knife. It, it's just it's conformed to your hand grip. Not even remotely. This thing's an uncomfortable octagon covered in schmutz. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just weird. Yes, sir. We'll accept that and move on. All right. So what I'm actually going to do for these panels, I'm not just, I promise I'm not just going to make you watch me glue plastic card. Um, I'll get this done uh, quickly. You have no idea how many hours I've made my viewers just watch me sand apart. So don't worry about spending time gluing plastic card. That's fair. But when I'm done, I'm going to show you guys a quick way to... get uh, textured cement walls if I have them too because I didn't expect to do this but I should I pretty much always do particularly since I've been working on urban terrain recently it's not the only way I get a good cement texture but it's probably my well it's definitely my preferred way I say that Paint towel, clean up a little spill there. Press it down nice and firm from this side. Glue it to the paper. 
Stack it. Another sheet. Oh, I have the sheets. I can ask you for sheets. I mean, you can if you run out. Or you want like the nice textured ones. There you go. All right. In this case, we've got some uh, plugs right here uh, where the door frame is meant to attach. So I'm going to wipe off any glue I put here real quick. Bin that. I'm actually going to take a Sharpie and all those raised areas and slap a bunch of Sharpie on it. Slap, 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 slap. Slapity slap, 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 slapity slap, 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 slap. Slapity slapity, slapity slapity. And ooh, slapity slapity. Slapity slapity. I'd slap that one, but it's broken. Oh, these are both, that's interesting. I wonder if they were supposed to be. It's not like anybody broke this kit. All right. And somebody might say, Justin, why are you going to do that? And I'll say, just watch. Have patience. Have beard hair attached to your glue. You don't see that kind of action in those GW videos. I mean, you only get that kind of action here. Where a different level of professionalism than Secret Weapon. Oh, yeah. So you come here, you also get a dog. When she feels like it. Right now, she's outside. More glue. Okay. I get one grumpy modeler moment right here. So grumpy old modeler says, um, I see people pick up these little tubes all the time. Uh, this is my preferred way of doing cyanoacrylate. I actually buy cases of these things. Doesn't dry out on me. Nice small applicator. I never have a problem with the tubes. But I watch people buy these all the time. And they will actually um, take off the cap, poke a hole in it, Put it back on. When instead, that red ring is there to stop it from puncturing itself. You take the red ring off. The more you know! The less I have to get grumpy when I go to modeling stores. I will also remind you that when you yell, it's directly into my ear. You're welcome. Woo! Yeah, let's make a mess. Too much glue. Go on the inside or the outside of that? Inside. Good. Just the little window frames. Demarcation here. Everything's good. Everything's good. These. Good. Flip it. Press it. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, but only a little bit, because I want it to stay nice and tight, because I will be able to see in the light my black marks. Whoop whoop. The scrap pile grows. Last piece. Last piece, last piece, last piece. No widgets, no widgets. One of these tubes is not like the other. One of these tubes is totally freaking empty.
nice thin coat. I used to have a brush on CA uh, that was actually very good. And I had a big bottle of that, and I have not been able to find it since. And of course, I threw that one out thinking I could just go down to the uh, giant airplane hobby store, pick up a bottle there, because they have every other kind of glue I've ever wanted, except for the Forbidden Uhu, of course. And uh, no, they, they didn't even know that there was a brush on CA. And I found others, but they've all just been rubbish. So this is going to give me backing on each of these walls. And room to bunk a lamp with my head. Always good. Everyone needs a hobby. Oh, how about I start with not the one that I just glued? Since that'll probably glue it to the table. Start at the bottom, work our way up. So before I do the wall, interior wall texturing, I need to trim off the excess, of course. First, so all I'm doing is pressing right up against the edge of that building. I need to make sure that it's a nice tight fit because remember these pieces are going to have to fit into the other um, section of wall. So once I do this, I'm actually going to have to flip it over and cut on the inside to get the gapping right for those seams. See how I have this section here? So I'll have to trim that out. And that's pretty easy. You just boom and glue it to yourself, because there's still glue on there. Hmm. This one wants to argue. This one wants to bend. How fun. All right, so that is a nice trim wall panel, but of course I also need to deal with the window. But given that I still see shine of the glue in there and encountered some here, I'm gonna leave that for the moment. Go on to the next one. Because if my plastic card is folding, my blade is decidedly not sharp enough. Oh good, that box just spilled in my bin. Again. to go with the comedy show and not the model painting show. Me too. Can't help myself. It's a sickness. I actually did stand-up comedy for quite some time. I do not miss it. We'll have a very dear friend that makes a good living at it now. meaning he can cover both rent and food.
Jess says hello. Hey, Jess. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. And for anyone whose uh, first visit this is, please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can uh, get updates on what we're doing. In addition to the Workbench Wednesday modeling show, uh, working on a new schedule for those uh, video game broadcast days, not just for Fallout, of course, although Fallout is uh, still one of the, my favorites on the console right now. Um, but I'll throw other games into the mix in the hope that uh, folks in the PS4 community and the Shared Secret Weapon community can come and join me for a game day. I've had a few folks join me in Fallout 76 now. That was a good time. I've got a reasonably uh, high-level character and tons of recipes and materials, so I've been able to make better gear for folks and drop plans because I have tons of extra uh, camp plans. So yeah, if you're ever on the uh, PS4 playing Fallout 76, please let me know. All right, and this is the one with my black spotties, which I should have done that last so I can see them now, but not as well as if I had uh, had that ink wet when I put the glue on it. So my fault. It's fine, I have to cut the door out anyway. A little extra cutting here won't hurt anything because, again, we're going to put our paint on top of this. And hopefully I don't know where that paint is. I did just get a restock. I know that. Just making sure, seeing if it's on my desk or I already put it away. We've got the uh, studio remodel and the final layout now, at least. section out. Boink. Uh, that's going to go all the way up to the door. Good. So I can actually just do that. Which gets me that as well. There should be some... Ah, oh, there it is. I see that one. Right there. I hope the light can pick that up. But when you do a better job than I did, you apply the ink just before you put the glue on it. Uh, it will actually bleed out a little bit and make itself pretty visible, particularly in this nice thin, like, Op 3 sheet. Yeah, the camera's not quite picking it up, but it becomes visible once you cut into it. And it helps. I mean, obviously, you can just find it with your hand, but it helps to have another guide so that I can see, for instance, which direction they're oriented. Like this one goes horizontally. There it is. Pressing right up against it. And that means this one goes vertically right there. There it is. Ooh, overshot. Is there one? Let's just cut out this whole little section and see what happens. Because again, once I put the material on top, it won't matter so much. Oh, I was wrong about there being one there. All right. Commander Mark, if you're out there, I hope somehow this reaches you. Thank you for teaching me to make noise when I did my art. It does help. Boink. One more should work. I end up cutting myself because you make me laugh while I'm doing this. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going through and cutting out the window and door frames.
this cut up real quick. I want these cuts to be reasonably clean on the inside of this uh, because I'm going to wind up still putting the window frames in here where and how they belong. So everything needs to be nice and tidy. But even already, even if we just left it like this, the interior is going to look substantially better uh, when this is built, even if this is just dark inside. Uh, but of course, I can't just leave it there. I can't. I really suspect that in just the two hours of the originally scheduled broadcast, we can turn this into an entirely different model. And if not, we're going to run a little long today because I don't want to leave this project unfinished. I left it unfinished for too long. I uh, kind of foresee a trip to the um, for a dollhouse and modeling store in the future to pick up some like 124 scale cans and whatnot for putting on counters. Oh yeah, yeah, and I actually do that on a regular basis. Um, whenever I get around one anyway. I love the uh, Sacramento uh, doll show too. Um, the challenge is that very few places actually do uh, quarter scale dollhouse accessories. Um, and when they do, they're, they're usually pretty cheesy. <laughs> um, well, I will be over in the bay so I can stop at that one we went to that one time. Yeah, that place is great. Uh, same issue, though. Uh, yeah. What little they had. And they had this one little section of quarter scale. And it was mostly food. And yeah, I make better food than that. So if I need food. I'll find an excuse because making all that food for the Flying Restaurant Remora project was uh, that came out really well. the Sad Panda Restaurant. Phone number on the menus was five 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 sack. All the signs on the uh, flying restaurant um, specifically said, uh, "We suck. Our food sucks." Uh, the restaurant was called Sad Panda. This blade's already getting dull. I am not shocked. Time to replace. That's another one. You will want to replace your blades on a regular basis when you are working plastic hard. Um, it's better to have a sharp blade. Someone told me that a company makes a blade sharpener. And that sounds like a really horrible idea. Their response was, well, how do you know until you try it? Rah. I'm not sticking a sharp blade into a thing that's meant to sharpen it. I mean, I do that with my kitchen knives, but in a control, this is, yeah, no, this is some Your automatic machine. also have more material to them. Yeah, and a big old handle, and yeah, not likely to shatter if you mishandle it. Yeah. All right. Last one. Excellent. I am glad. quite sure this shell station is going to dock up, but, uh, you know, anything can. We can, we can loot it. That's we can fine. loot it. 
now I have this beautiful image in my head. Uh, Mystery Men was one of my favorite movies. And uh, the lady from the junkyard, I have an image of her in my head now going, loot it! <laughs> but it's a building. Loot it! <laughs> Fix it, Felix. We can loot it. We can loot it. Bang, bang, bang. That makes him the Gretchen of the story. I'm for that. If someone hasn't already created Wreck It Ralph 40k crossover fan art, they will now. I'm excited to see that. You can send that. <laughs> yeah, make sure it winds up on our Facebook page. Please. All right. So, before I get to the next step, I also throw the caps for these things away. I just don't cover them up by super glue because I just don't need to. I do throw away the empty ones, though. At least occasionally. All right. So, the outside of the building is still absolutely atrocious. The inside of the building is still absolutely boring. We are going to start fixing these one at a time as soon as I figure out where I'm going to put them as I paint them. And I have an answer right here in the form of the box. You got everything out of it you need to? Yeah. Yeah. All right. At the moment, my favorite crackle medium, covered in plastic now. Hey, look, hobby knife. For painting, not for airbrushing, my favorite crackle medium is the Distress Crackle Paint. You can pick this stuff up at uh, most hobby stores. And I'm going to get a big old brush. Uh, would you hand me Seamus' paint bucket under those panels right there? Because I traded out with him and haven't put water in the new one. Thank you. All right. So I've got my crackle medium. And what I'm going to do... Uh, in fact, this will be great, because you guys won't be able to see it, because I use it clear until I put color in it. You won't be able to see it. <laughs> so I'm going to put a really thin coat just across the whole surface. At the moment, I'm just slathering it on. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to give it single direction. Which is now, because now there's enough to cover the whole thing. I'm just gonna brush up and down. start wearing one of those restaurant nets. You'll still find hair in it. Yeah, I know. I still find resin in my underwear drawer, and we haven't had a casting shop here in years. Yeah, I have the same problem. Our joke in the shop was, you weren't really one of us until you found um, resin flash in your clean underwear. Because that meant you brought it home, and it went through your wash cycle, went into your clean laundry, and now you're really one of us. And you'll never be without resin flash again. Move away to another state, unpack a box, BAM! Resin flash! Ow. Yeah, I hit that thing like a bell. That yes. hurt both of us. How exciting. You're not wearing a headset. No, no. But my finger hurts really bad now. Good. Make you feel better? <laughs> I have this strange ringing in my ear for some reason. Sounds like a bell. Uh. 
hey Jim, if you're watching this, not holding it by the ferrule. Ugh. Oh. I don't know what was up with that month, man. I could not stop. I was joking with Jim Wapple that I needed to find some way to ensure I stopped holding my brushes by the uh, barrels, and he suggested electrifying them, which seemed totally reasonable to me. Last but not least, so it will be tempting to make broad brush strokes this way, but I need to remember the direction of the others because I'm doing this vertically. Not vertical. Streaking and cracking. Like an old plaster or cement wall, which is what we would generally find on the other side of this brick, and certainly not ejector pins and a rough frame. You're still with your brush. Nope. I wait off the side of the thing. I would know. No. <laughs> I will lick my brush only when I know where all of the material of my paint came from. And even then, I try not to. It's a bad habit and a bad idea. Do you want bladder cancer? That's how you get bladder cancer. Because some companies, not this company, but some companies still put cadmium in their hobby paint and say they don't. All right, so I need those to dry, which means I have nothing to do and uh, we'll be back in about 45 minutes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what, somebody out there might want to play some Fallout. I could take a break for that. Hey, I can hand you another kit. <laughs> Y'all want to watch me play Beat Saber for an hour instead? Oh God, no, not an hour. Do you want to watch me drop dead on live camera? Because that's what you'd get after an hour of Beat Saber. You might as well just put the brush. I think that's going to... Yeah, just start now, Justin. Give it up. All right. So, actually, I want a little more of that crackle mini because the pieces we have here are the wood and the uh, base plate for the this thing. And that's great because one of the most requested things for me to cover, and I've done it a couple of times now, but people still keep asking, which means I might as well do more is how to use my weathered wood set. In fact, I think I am going to do this as a freehand shell symbol. But we'll see. I'm feeling ambitious at the moment, but I often say that I don't or don't do freehand and people mistake that for I can't do freehand. I can. I just have not done it for a long time. So I'm very out of practice. All right. So uh, I need my hobby knife here to clean up some of the schmutz. Away, schmutz, away. Get back. I shall fear no schmutz. Oh my gosh, except for that schmutz, did I really? Wow, all right. There are giant ejector pins on this side. Somehow I'm not surprised. Yeah, I don't have my grinder handy, so let's see if I can just, uh... You want some sandpaper? I have some sandpaper, I don't know what that is. I'll spread it out a bit, there we go. That'll be visible when I paint, too. So you generally feel when one of those is going to matter. And I'll sand it. I'll grind it with a little glass bead thing. I'll uh, fill it with wood putty, whatever I need to do. All right, so there's that one. That's the sidewalk here. Yeah, this is a nice small piece. See woods. I'm 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting carried away, folks. Right now. So they're like, all right, well, now this is going to run into lunch if I do that. Well, I figured we were doing that anyway. Probably. Yeah. Just remember your uh, camera zones. Well, the camera zones? Yeah. Oh, have I been out here? Sorry. All right, so this fits into here. The roof fits on top of that. Um, and we've got our weathered wood piece here. But for this section right here, I want some of the crackle paints. So I should apply some of the crackle paints. But I'm aiming, uh, in this case, only for that center section of the island. In this case, it does not need to be any particular direction. It just needs to be really thin. I'm going this direction because it's easy. It's even easier when I stop getting so close to my barrel. I'm going to get in there and randomize it, stipple it. In fact, yeah, I'll stipple the whole thing. I've never actually tried just stippling it. See what happens. Hopefully that does exactly what I think it's going to do. I'm going to let that drop a lot. All right, so that piece needs to drop as well. Next. Next is wondering if I actually have hairspray in the studio. I may have to check my uh, bedroom for a second for the materials I'd need to do uh, some uh, chipped paint. I was going to uh, chip off the white paint uh, to expose some of the wood, but instead I can stipple on the white paint. And let me show you guys a different way to do that. But we're going to start uh, with the wood set. Uh, we're going to start by using my phone to turn off the heater. Nest Learning Thermostat. I'm going to turn myself up to 70 degrees every day, even though you've never done that, Justin. All right, next. Fresh oil, that's not what I want. I do want a bit of the verdigree. Dark green, though. And pale green. We'll talk about the verdigree colors later in the why. You look right. Oh, old oil. Rust shadow. Oh my gosh. Dark wood. Weathered wood. And you should be handle wood. It's only the dark wood color I wasn't going to be able to find today. Glad that all worked out. In this case, I'm applying these uh, straight on here without primer. I'll need to seal it properly uh, afterward. Actually, I have a better idea than doing white paint chips. Ha ha ha. No, I don't need hairspray or anything. Not even sponges. Not sure where my needle is, so it's easy peasy. Just like this. Wipe the excess off of my art towel, aka Wample Sock, aka Old Sock. All right, so I am actually just right here on the surface going to take weathered wood, that's the light color, and 
really get a nice coat across the whole surface here. Already you can see by itself it is a nice weathered wood color. And that it has great coverage, good matte. I'm not saying we make amazing paint. And I'm not saying it because it's self-evident. I'm so clever. Don't hate me because I'm clever, Ed. Let's get more in the zone for you here. Keeping the coat nice and light. This is all one coat coverage. Fanning it out. Also speed up the drying a bit. See? Easy peasy. Now, I'm going to do it to the first side of this as well. Huh. There's no wood texture on any side of this. I did an okay job here, but uh, it's like, wow, am I just... Is there only texture on one side? Am I overlooking it? Nope, there's nothing. All right, so we'll have to fake that a bit, and we can. And I'm not gonna get the top because I'm going to get to the bottoms. All of that section, all of this section, here, here, here. You see we're still getting good coverage on this even without any primer. You'll see in a minute we get good adherence to it. Just saying. Every time I get a chance to use our paints, I am just a little bit happier with them. Sure, I'm biased, but that doesn't make me wrong. All right, other side. I mean, technically, this is sponsored content, so you're welcome to. <laughs> well, folks know from my classes, too, that I never like to just use it as an advertising opportunity. So. Good paints out there and bad paints out there, and I'm generally always happy to talk about both and why I feel that way. So much of it is a matter of opinion, unless we're talking about companies that risk the safety of their employees and they lie about it, or customers and they lie about it. I mean, their employees too, probably. Yeah, their employees too. Well, the employees would know that they're putting cadmium in paint, I guess. Well, I guess maybe not. Who knows? I only know how the cancer issues played out. All right. Voila! Now it's going to get a bit trickier because I want to do the same treatment on the window panels. Uh, but not the door. We'll do something different with the door. Including make a couple of little posters or something. we got to do something like that. My printer's finally working again. So I can do that. What would these be? Metal or wood? They actually look like they're meant to be metal. Not wood. So I'm changing my plan again. <coughs> Excuse me. Much later. Come here. You look like dark iron, and you are. <clears throat> so I'm pulling out dark iron. I'll do that for the first coat on the metallic objects. Let's see if I can knock the schmutz out of the tube or not. Eh, if not, I'll just take the cap off. Yeah, see, there we go. Plenty. Quite a bit. All right. The brush. Doing it right here on the frames because we'll have to cut off the tabs. Um, 
Those pieces are going to be inside the uh, building, inside the wall. And this way I have a convenient piece to hold on to, to look to see what those are for. But I suspect they're metal too. I think everything red was meant to be the metal. So again, dark iron, no primer, going on just fine. It's going to have good staying power, good coverage, and not be enough paint. I don't want to get more. There's that. I am going to need more. So I will take the lid off the dark iron here, the nipple. Grab my nipple. Now I've got Ren and Stimpy in my head. They give it the nipples, I take them away. All right, uh, window panels. So. All right, we're doing the other side of these first. You're like, wait, it's the wrong side. It doesn't have to be the wrong side, Justin. It's the only side you've painted so far. See, I'm not heavily loading the brush here either, trying not to. Out of spots, it's a little thick. Even some water in this one from the uh, putting the paint lid on top of it earlier. back for paint that time and we're good to go. Just a couple little red spots. Not much though. Not enough to care about because now it's all gone. All right next. The door though. I'm going to make the panels here metal as well. I feel like they would be. Detail work with a number eight liner. Shader, rather, it's not a liner. So I'm actually going to go back over these little sections here later uh, with the uh, engine metal to get that nice silver sheen on it as well. This is just a base coat. Oh, good. I got it over my wood. And you know what? That's super okay. Because the next step in the wood process <laughs> pretty much doing that with dark wood. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute, but I'm not sad about getting spray on my wood. I'm really not. All right. Thicken spots, get your paint light out. All right, and get back to my windows. Oh, 
brush it in. Even with just the one coat, it's still a better finish than that bright red plastic with their uh, little black ink wash. Realistically aged. I couldn't even use a brown wash, folks. I'm trying to remember when it would have been. I finally got rid of my uh, isopropyl bottles uh, for the old fashioned wash like this. I had plenty of colors though too, uh, but the classic is to take a bottle of isopropyl and dump out an ounce and then dump a full one ounce bottle of India ink into it. So you now have a nice alcohol based wash that'll flow really smoothly into all those recesses and everything. Now, this was a trick invented for plastics like this where you'd pick up a train which was ostensibly finished and you would weather it by applying washes. Okay, good. That's plastic, not theater. <laughs> we can also thank the uh, model train community for uh, weathering pigments, at least the idea of them. They did bring us the uh, pastels as weathering powders. Uh, fortunately, we now know you shouldn't use pastels, but uh, yeah, it is where that started. laugh. I run into people on a regular basis that uh, say, hey, you know, I look at this idea I came up with. You know, I've never seen this before. And I said, yeah, that's older than I am. Not a lot of new ideas in the modeling world. Uh, we get a lot of cool new products and stuff these days. And definitely better quality products, but in terms of what we produce, those grumpy old modelers knew a thing or two. So listen to us. Hmm. I think the big part of the problem, though, is that a lot of the grumpy old modelers don't want to share. Um, or, like, with the Gumbla community, you know, they see it as, oh, those are just toys, they're for kids, I don't need to bother with any of that. So they don't really share that knowledge with the community. I, I find that less true, um among individuals on Facebook and then I do uh, groups uh, plenty of groups where you know you're, you're gonna get your trolls uh, but for instance uh, Spencer Pollard um, is an amazing modeler makes his living uh, writing articles about modeling um, well known especially for his work on skill model aircraft so we've struck up many a conversation about a project, uh, well, a couple of projects that I'm working on. The Zero uh, Fighter the, from Industrial Mechanica is one of those projects. Uh, but also I'm, I'm talking to him about how to properly detail up a cockpit of a uh, Valkyrie because I want to do a Valkyrie in, in the IPMS style. Uh, you know, that, that hardcore, old, grumpy model, uh, airplane modeler style. Yeah, I can get you a 120F train. I've got everything I need, including the Elysian drop troops out in the garage. Okay. Oh, that Valkyrie. Okay. That Valkyrie. Not the the Macross Valkyrie that I'm thinking of. No, no, no. I'm okay. talking a GW Valkyrie. All right. Everything that's supposed to be metal is metal. Yeah, good smile just really. Look at that shine. Look at that shine. Oh, that's so shiny. The, the shiniest to, uh, uh, tissue. It comes out. Of the bottle black, it goes on dark until you thin it, and then it's just this uh, beautiful graphite sheen. It's fast. Uh, that's the one I'm most giddy about. We really, uh, it was a color I didn't think we could pull off. Um, and not only did we, it's just better than I thought it would be. All right, so now I'm going to take my dark wood, put it over here, and I'll make a nice wash out of that. Then it is. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to keep my brush damp. Pull some over here. Thin it just a little bit. Check over here to see how that's. And I am flicking, flicking, flicking. 
finger flicking good. Anybody start to see what's happening with the wood? It appears to be getting some black mold. All right. Nice spotty aged wood. But wait, there's more. Put that over. Dry off the zone. Get a piece in here. And get a nice dry brush. Because we're gonna dry brush. <laughs> Kidding aside, there are plenty of folks who don't realize that it's really hard to dry brush when your brush is damp. Buy a dry brush. This grumpy old modeler segment brought to you by dry brushing. And don't talk crap about dry brushing. Oh my god. I love that beautiful object source lighting that uh, Victoria Lamb and Laszlo have given us. Is, uh, it's all dry brushed, folks. It's just another technique in your toolbox with a lot of valid uses. All right, so now that is still damp in a couple of spots where I've got big dots, so I'm actually going to take my towel dab at him. And that's fine because now I also get a little tide pooling on him. I love it. Check the other side. And dry brush. Let's blend that all in a bit. Make it a bit more subtle. Put your towel back on. What were you? Born in a barn? Special thanks again to John Tolcher uh, for showing me his technique and allowing me to share it and inspiring the uh, wood paint trio. All right, so more subtle, more blended in, more natural looking compared to this side, especially. dry brush there for when I need to dry brush next. Come back to my wet brush. Remember we made that uh, wash earlier. I'm going to thin that more. Really, really wet. And So you guys can see it, hopefully. Get it all nice down. Oh, put that on my towel. Take a little wet. That's why I put a paper towel down. three steps to a good aged gray wood. The rest is just improving on what we've done now. Apply the wash a little heavier in spots. Even the tide pooling that happens from applying a wash heavy uh, can give you a wonderful look to your wood but it is going to pool on the bottom, so do put a paper towel down when you are 
letting it dry and uh, keep an eye uh, because even with the paper towel it doesn't always wick away all of this stuff at the bottom so you can see I keep being able to wipe off. I'll do that on the other side and just leave this standing upright while I move on to other pieces. Especially since it looks like I have to make a little more wash. I am just hammering this stuff on there. Just... Check the front. Just, just use this up. I want this to be nice and dark on the bottom coat. So again, the shell station, they show it red and white, of course, because, you know, shell station, red, white, and yellow. And that's fine. I'll do that. This is actually going to wind up a white panel. All right, so hopefully the other paper towel I grabbed for this, doubled over, set that right over here. I might even brush paint all of this, at least most of it. I have the uh, airbrush out, which I'll certainly use for some of the weathering applications at the end. All right, put that in the dead zone. Let's see what we have over here with our crackle meat. Not much action yet, it's starting to. A couple of spots where I could see now I didn't get, so I'm going to actually steal some of this stuff as it's drying. Mess it up completely. Doesn't matter. It's an old weathered wall. Plus, I can thin it out right here where I think it's too thick. I'm spreading it around. Messing it up, we'll have splotchy walls. Kind of like I would expect from an old filling station. So I can see those crackles, but you won't be able to see them until I break out the airbrush, I suspect. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to fix this. Try that stippling over there on that big section. This one too. And would you be willing to grab the uh, blow dryer out from under my sink, please? Sorry about that, but this was unexpected. <laughs> no worries. And again, what this is going to give me is that old plaster or concrete texture that you would expect to find inside of a building like this and get rid of that really boring framework that we had inside. It's going to hide all the ejector pins. It's just going to drastically improve this, even if we don't do anything else. But of course, I want to make posters and stuff, so you guys might just get to see this dry fit in photos. Unless Emily uh, convinces me that we should just keep going until I'm finished. Just keep going until you're finished. Gosh darn it, I'm going to keep going until I finish. I already put on the schedule that this was an extended extra long workbench. So. so now I just need to figure out how to uh, eat at my desk without bothering everybody on the other end of the camera. Mm. Is that plug got a spot? I can make it have one. Uh, Let me make sure I unplug the correct thing. Well, if not, I've got plugged. So now I'm actually going to blow dry this stuff. Uh, once it starts cracking, you can. Uh, is it a good idea? It's never a good idea to blow dry your paint, actually. Not ever. I do it all the time. But it's not a good idea, and you should never. Hang on, crappy old modeler. Yeah, I know. do that don't do. There is so much of that in, especially in, in trying to, you know, share techniques and teach folks when I do classes and stuff, where I explain constantly, I'm like, all right, don't do this. You're going to watch me do it 20 times in class. You should not get into the habit. And there are a lot of those habits that if you can avoid them, man, do. Uh, it'll be magic when I throw paint on it. You guys will be like, wow, it's not white. <laughs> I can actually see something. Yeah, 
All right. Two more. I also don't want to get the plastic too hot, of course. I do want to clean up a couple of messy bits. Where'd you go? Ah. Got to keep it moving so I don't overheat the plastic there and have it bend on me. My plastic, that ought three sheet, of course. Putting it on cool for a minute. If you do pick up a hobby dryer, uh, you'll want to make sure it's got a cool button. By hobby dryer, I mean the same one I use for models in my beard. To be fair, when I had the mohawk, I was using the same hairspray on my hair as I was for my models, but why double up? Every purchase is a hobby purchase if you think about it. I, uh, so in the realm of Justin's Lived a Weird Life, I spent some years as a professional juggler, uh, part of a two-man comedy act. And when we started to do well, we actually got an accountant. Um, and it took several interviews for her to start to be able to even wrap her head around helping us. And at one point she actually asked, she's like, wait a minute, could you guys stand on a table and throw chairs at each other? I'm like, well, yeah, I guess, why, what are you thinking? She's like, I'm just thinking that if you could, you could write off your dining set. He's like, you guys need to start collecting a lot more receipts and then telling me how you use them in your act. And yeah, like we didn't realize at the time that clothes specific to the show, things like that, could uh, be written off. So that was a long time ago. I have a photo of me juggling at the K Street Ball in Sacramento, right over there, with a mohawk <laughs> and a beard. One of the reasons I laugh when I uh, went back to this, people say, "Oh, Justin, you know, you're finally going hipster." And I'm like, yes, just like in 1992. That's fine. That just makes me a proto-hipster. So I was hipster before there were hipsters. Like, ultra-hipster. No. Arm is just sighing at me. All right. I'll give up. And airbrush. And check the smudge. See, I still got some smudge here at the bottom of the thing. So dab. Dab. Otherwise, that looks good. And I'm going to airbrush the building. In no small part, so y'all can see it. I'm going to need two colors for that. Today I'm going to use uh, my inks. Um, maybe. Thank you. A little Payne's gray action and uh, cool gray. Do I have some cool gray in here today? Did I use all that up? Color formulating. Well, how about that? All right, no cool gray, no cool gray. Uh, that's a disappointment, but that's fine. I have good colors too. For that, I have exactly what I was looking for, rubber highlight for the concrete color. And I got cups out, figuring I'd have to do this. Uh, yes, I want this one thin. So, paint. This is just water. Uh, I am fortunate enough to live in an area with uh, really incredible um, water treatment. Uh, if you do not, if you're, especially if you're using something like well water, uh, that's when you need to use distilled water. I get people that say all the time, you always need distilled water in your paint. Um, and those grumpy old modelers are wrong. Uh, because you used to always need distilled water for your airbrush. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you'd be mixing in, you know, calcium deposits and all kind of weird, nasty stuff. Because, of course you would. Uh, 
Well, that's not supposed to happen. It's swapper brush time. Well, actually, I'll try cleaning it real quick, because I did make sure this worked before the show. And it did. And now it wants to be uh, persnickety. Your airbrush is a bit of a drama queen. Yeah, these Grexes really are. I, uh, I really should just stick to my Infinity. But I've really come to enjoy the... Uh, Pistol grip. All right, well, I will just accommodate the airflow issue and see how it works out. After the remodel, I wasn't able to find my quick releases again, so all of my brushes have to screw on and screw off, which means empty the tank, switch brush, fill the tank. I'm like, no, nope. Oh, we're not using this. I'd say there's a problem. Yes. All right. Well, Brush, let's rinse you out and get a different one. Oh, Brush. Turn that off. Hold on to the hose tight. shoot off at 20 PSI. Yeah, that was a little bit of plastic that popped out of there. Maybe that was the problem. All right. Yeah. You clean and working today? Of course you are. You're my infinity. I'm just going to go straight to the infinity. Oh, which still has its quicker release attached. Of course it does. I'll stick that right there where it belongs. At least now I have one quicker. Yeah. All right. Good. Good to go. Fill the tank. Spray some ink. I wonder if Seamus destroyed my lather brush or it was my fault. Oh, it's so good. Oh, so good. Oh, Infinity, you complete me. My wife's pretty great, too. Don't get me wrong. But... So once I get these, you can see some of the stuff flaking away, and that's great. It's adding to my texture. If I want to stop that from happening, I go outside and I very carefully apply a layer of varnish, which I, in this case I will do after. And by which case I, I mean I will ask Anne, because... That's what having assistance about, right? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad she agreed. As long as there's a city paycheck involved, I'll believe whatever you say. Yeah, nice. All right, here's one. Just trying to decide if Ghostbusters was appropriate for my eight-year-old. The only reason I say no is that he uh, he really doesn't like scary movies, like, at all. Uh, I will say the second one scared the hell out of me as a kid. Oh, yeah, me too, actually, man. Drago was something else. Dragging her into the kitchen and everything. That's the first one, too. That yeah, that's one the first one. Me. No, it was the bathtub in the second one. I remember the bath oh, God, yeah, the bathtub. Yeah. For the longest time, my parents could not get me into a tub. <laughs> In some ways, those actually bothered me more than... Because uh, I was very young when I was watching, like, Friday the 13th. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a big fan of practical effects since I was a kid. And, yeah, that scared me less because these uh, practical effects were so bad. Like, especially, I don't remember if you uh, had seen it, but at the end of it... Uh, uh, Freddy drags somebody through a window, the front door window, 
and it's very clearly a blow up doll with a wig on. <laughs> Like, there's no way it's not. Like, it flops around like a blow-up doll with a wig on the whole bit. And you're like, what? Like, this is our big scary finish, folks. Freddy Krueger reached into the day world and stole a mannequin. Well, stole a blow-up sex doll, most likely. You should watch my language. This is not rated mature. Did you say sex? I'm not sure I can say blow-up sex doll, though. I think you can say it. I just don't think you can show it. <laughs> All right, these are going to be ready to go here in just a second. I mean, if that was a problem, then the, the nipples comment earlier would <laughs> But they're nipples. They're nipples. But they at least weren't female presenting nipples. I can't, so. I can't code switch. <laughs> and this one's ready to go. All right, all four of these are ready to go. You need those varnish them? Please and thank you. And I'll move back to other stuff. Including our sidewalk here. Uh, which will not need to be varnished, but gets the same treatment. Get out of the dead zone and into the life zone. about the streaking there either it is a service station see how I can incorporate that and then take one of the rulers that doesn't matter that would be you hey look I made a mask And of course, because it's my infinity, I can also just get right there next to the edges because I've had lots of practice doing it. Oh, infinity, you're so crazy, and I love you so much. You're the airbrush of my dreams. All right, but now I'm going to do the lighter coat over the rest of the uh, sidewalk pieces. I'll blend that in. But that way the uh, curb portion starts lighter than the center when I start highlighting. now for something very entertaining. We're going to call Emily. It's even more amusing because for someone who always has her phone on her, this time it's sitting next to me. I was just going to let her know something about the uh, <laughs> uh, pieces she's uh, varnishing outside. But she didn't have to stay there and wait because, well, we have other things to do. All right, there's my gray for later. Uh, right now we are going to do the last of the metallics. So I take out my engine metal. Pop some of that in the old palette. Thank you. 
a message here from my son's school that I have to respond to. Please forgive me. Hey, I'm on camera now. If you'd like to watch, but otherwise I'll have to get back to you this afternoon. Sorry about that, folks. School issues do take precedence. Let me get a little dry brush here going on. In this case, I don't not have to be gentle or any sort of thing. Just go for it, man. Hey, I tried to call you. My phone's over there. Well, yeah. Um, your garage door is having an issue. Garage door? Yeah. Like the one to the garage? No, like the one outside. The exterior garage door. It won't close? Yeah. Uh, box probably fell. Uh, it seems to be like hitting something. Yeah. Okay. Chances. Are, oh, like the like it starts to come down and goes ka-chunk, ka-chunk? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not getting close to the ground? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The uh, spring needs to be oiled. Mm -hmm. Normally do that in January, but thank you. So it's open right now? Yes. Okay, that's exciting. We may have to take a brief break. I'm a bit reticent to have my uh, garage door just sitting open. I can imagine where that would be an issue. Well, I don't imagine anybody really wants the IKEA boxes, but... Uh, and I don't think anybody's quite bold enough in this neighborhood to uh, make off with the exercise equipment, so. Love to see somebody running down the street with the rowing machine. <laughs> that would be pretty great. I wouldn't even chase him at that point. I'd be like, man, good for you. Look at you running with a rowing machine. You don't even need that rowing machine. What's the point of stealing the exercise equipment you don't even need? Actually, I guess I would chase him, but just for that. Like, hey, you clearly don't even need this. Look at me. I can't even catch up to you when you're carrying my rowing machine. Come back. I need that more than you do. And we're back. Woohoo! Technical difficulties. So, hey, folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Open Miniatures again. And, uh, yeah, I got the first round of the metal applied to the door or to the window frames. 
Probably should still look up what those little metal jam things are for, but uh, yeah, whatever. It's always later for that. What did go wrong? It's good that the uh, program decided to crash right as we started to get like seven people in the chat. <laughs> as it happens. Now, it should just let us pick up the broadcast, right? Are we? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Resume. How nice. I think it ends up being two separate videos in the YouTube library, but I can fix that later. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. I'm also going to apply this to the uh, this color set uh, to the top of the uh, roof panel, but not yet. I'm going to do that as a chipped red paint. Thinking again about the shell colors. Now there are a few things that I'm going to do to finish this piece that we won't be able to do on camera because I haven't finished the research for them, like making a, a wall calendar and um, a California um, automotive service consumer rights poster. You know, anytime I go into an auto shop, I see one of those. So I'd like to get those things on there. Uh, so we'll have to do the detailing, I think, in the second episode. Because goodness knows, I don't want to turn on a broadcast where you guys watch me search Google for perfectly reasonable terms. Because we all know how that ends. Oh my gosh. Safe search on all the time. Yeah, it's got to be. It's all broadcasting. Extra super safe search. Please don't let YouTube shut me down search. Huh. Oh my god, I told you not to make us see that when we were working on a broadcast search. Alright, where's my dry brush? Uh-oh. Mm, neither. That's okay. Guess what? I've got a spare. Take my hand of wood. Dry brush some shine over this. Not quite randomly. Trying to keep that center area nice and light for the shell sign to go on. I need a touch more wash in a couple of spots to pick out some of the wood grain where it flowed too far down, so I'll have to lay it flat for a minute. A couple of these places where I feel like the spotting is a little heavy, I can actually pick a board. Really blend the color in on one of them. Then just make sure I feather it. You've got that one board there. Do it there. I should probably do it on the front. Or it might actually be visible. Again, dry the brush and feather it out. You don't want it to stand out too much. It starts to look a bit funky fast. Small brush, wash, tacky tap, tacky tap. Okay. 
make sure I get it under the Is it there? Make it a little thicker. Effectively black lining this, but using the uh, weathered wood color, or the dark wood color, excuse me. Oh, it is so much easier to paint when I'm not in the habit of holding my head like this. I don't know where that came from. Oh, I got back to that. Bad habit. All right, with all that done, take my dry brush. Those little messy places, I'm going to feather again, just lightly. But Justin, you're feathering in some of the wash. Yes, I know. You are a madman. Hmm. I am going to apply a bit more wash. I do want the wood grain a bit more defined. This is what I have planned for later. do is lay this on its back instead. Clean sample of that paint. That made me wash right in the original pot. Too thick. Too thin. Oh well. But you'll see quickly we're just over that little highlight We've now got a lot of variation in here, particularly from the uh, sections where we put the uh, handle wood. So I'm actually just going to leave this for a few seconds, and then I'm going to towel it off. Actually, I can do one better. I can do one of the things that you should never do. And it's going to blow it around and give me some interesting tide cooling. Oh, goodness, sort of, yeah. Right now we have um, just a wash made out of handlewood and darkwood. Uh, this is a darkwood wash, this is a darkwood wash, and that's the engine metal that I'm not using anymore. With that mostly dry, I'm now going to come over and towel it. And we have nice weathered barnwood. In need of a dry brushing. Again. So it's that building up of layers that creates the more realistic weathering effects. Uh, yeah, some of it you can do, you know, in a step or two, but obviously the greater the effort, the greater the return. And I still have a dry brush. And I still know where weathered wood paint is. So we are on a roll now. Oh good, not making a mess. I like making messes. It's part of being a hobby. Hey, any day I have paint in my hands, it's a good day. So in this case, nice and dry, nice and dry, nice and dry, nice and dry, nice and dry. Giving 
doing the whole thing of light dry brushing. I just want to give it a slightly oxidized look. I'm going to come back on specific areas and boards. Really lighten this out. And then, of course, I said the whole wood section needed to be white because of the uh, shell sign, so we're going to go heavy later. But for now, I'm going to get to the heavy woods, old wood section, and uh, check in with my mother-in-law to see if she wants it to still be a shell station or just a general service station. I uh, might wind up making a uh, family sign for it. This is right next to S.H. Merwin & Sons Tractors, for which I made a sign many years ago. One of those pieces I'm still excited to see because it was fun, and I'm glad they you know, incorporated it in their transect. But also, every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I should really offer to redo this because this is really not great. <laughs> All right. So now, switching to vertical, because I don't want any of those uh, horizontal streaks in my wood. It makes it look unnatural. Kind of hitting the center of the boards. Like I said, weathered wood. At this point, what I would actually want to do is, uh, if I'm going to keep it wood instead of going more white, uh, is come back with uh, another round of splotching. Uh, as you can see, so much of that splotching got lost, but it's nice to have it there. So you get that texture in the wood covered up, largely. <laughs> and compare that to where we were earlier. So, get the towel involved on this side, we'll finish this piece off. Get paint on my face. Every day is a good day when there's paint on your face. No, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? No. It's not quite the same thing. Remembering to start uh, horizontally for the first time so I don't get rid of the uh, wash. So I don't want to do this as a general or, uh, vertical dry brush because I'll lose that wood graining. Voila, et voila. So to finish this bit, I am going to get one of my other shaders, come back to some dark iron, your dark wood, your old twizzy widget, old whoozy widget, that's what it says on the bottle. I don't remember that color in the bottle. It might say oil instead of whoozy widget, but I didn't get a good look. Brush damp. 
paint. Pull it off onto the edges. Some more paint. Worry less about it going on thick. More about it not going on. So now, once I get the metal base coat down, we can decide with my mother-in-law uh, what colors the shop is going to be. Um, and then I'll do uh, chip paint over the metallic part of this. So where the paint uh, is chipped away, we'll have that uh, metallic cover that you generally expect on the top of the facade like this. Let's fix that. This one came over the other side. I forgot that it did not. So that will be fine. I'll just hit that with a little bit of the uh, white gun, which I will do. Voila. And yes, I do use my fingers on a regular basis when I'm painting the models. This is on the long list of reasons that Jim Waffle and I get along so very well. Can't leave Kathy out of that though. Oh my goodness. Granted, Kathy, if you're watching this, I don't think I've ever seen you paint with your fingers. But I know you must. Gary asks what your preferred chipping method is with metallics. Uh, it really depends on the app uh, uh, application there, Gregory. Um, the smaller the space, the less likely I am to use uh, hairspray, um, uh, especially salt. Uh, I would say in order, the smaller the space, I'm more likely to go um, sponge, hairspray, salt. Uh, whereas a large space, like, you know, the truck I'm working on here, uh, you know, I can get really carried away and I don't have to worry about, uh, how fine that detail has to be. Uh, so in terms of which method, I find that it's much more a question of preference and scale, uh, than it is, um, a hard and fast rule. Uh, additionally, although I'm going to, you know, hit this truck really hard with the hairspray, the whole car is going to get a coat. Uh, it's not going to get a lot of scratches. Um, you don't have to uh, ding the whole vehicle, even if you, uh, or the whole project, even if you hit the whole thing with spray paint, uh, you can, or hairspray, uh, you can still, uh, you know, get in there with your airbrush needle or a toothpick or something and just very carefully shoot, make a couple of little scratches and call it a day. All right, this is dry enough. To move. Time to finish the interior walls so that I can move on to the exterior file. So this is my rubber highlight. This is my amazing Xfinity. Xfinity. Ah! Hmm. Infinity. Oh, the marketing bug has infected me. It's commercials all the way down.
Well, I might have made this too thin. So let's stop doing that. I'll take it straight out of the pot. I need to find my needle. All right, we can do it. Here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Slightly miscus, you could say. Pressure needs to go up because I'm shooting. Through a fine aperture. Got my OT2 on here, of course. I definitely need a brush with a larger aperture, but right now this is in here and we're going to make it. Otherwise, I know which color I'll switch to to make this work. Yep, I'm going to switch real quick. Cleaning out first with water, then with isopropyl, then with water again, of course. Don't want any residual iso in there when I put the paint in. I'm making sure I get all that gray out of there. I would have had to turn the pressure up much higher to get the infinity to play nice with solid acrylic like that. airbrush. This one's got my half mil on it. So that should do just fine with the acrylic. Assuming this one works. Oh my gosh. What a day for a guy that does most of the airbrushing. Having bad luck with my airbrushes. Let's try this. That would be funny. Ha! Ah. Ah. Ha! Why not? All right. Probably a lot of reasons why not, but... Oh, it didn't even work. No. That one is not going to clean up for me, so... I'll 
probably a little bead in there is stuck in the tip. That's why you'll see a lot of the time when my paints get uh, stuck, the first thing I actually do to the bottles is whack them on the table. I shake fairly aggressively, shake my paint fairly aggressively, so. That's our nice spotty concrete color. Might as well leave this open. Nice spotty concrete color. Again, in this case, touch up spots. Not gonna stay this way, of course. Oh no, we'll paint over that. But I've gotta get rid of all those white spots. I want them to be a different color, but not white. Just a lighter gray. Because in this case, again, it's about that texture, not the peeling paint. Not that project. This one a little better. Last but not least. All right, and I suppose a universal color for the inside of this is kind of a cream color. What do you think out there, world? What color is a general service station interior wall once it's no longer cement? Yeah, I'd say probably it's green. You know, you have some stains here and there, but it's kind of like that. Say dear. Ecru. Close enough. Alright. Last coat for the interior, I hope. Woo, some water on the wall. Excellent. Okay, not great in this case. But not bad, we'll get a little staining there. And the replace. Some more paint in here. Is that trouble drawing now? of our cement color under there and it does a great job of tinting this tone to what I was looking for so that'll be the interior for now I'll talk to my mother-in-law like I said I'm getting this all ready to dry fit and talk to her because the rest will just be final detailing a couple of color choices lighting uh, lighting's on her she actually is uh, very good at the train lighting and uh, if she has a plan to light this then it is unbeknownst to me unknown to me, rather.
leaving this nice spot because I really like that color area there. Lightening this area up around it a bit. Pull it out. This is the back wall, so I'm making it a little lighter than the others as well. Make it a little more visible in there. Big thing for me with finding the right airbrush is uh, something that either does not have a hopper uh, to speak of, um, like the Infinity, you know, or a removable one. Um, and if it is removable, like the Infinity and the Grex here, I like them to be small because 99% of the time when we're working on a model, um, you know, this little cup is enough for me to, you know, get the highlight on a, a what, 148th, 135th Sherman tank. Uh, certainly a 135th, no problem. Um, lots of times it's enough for a 124th car, too, so I don't generally need a lot of paint. And I find that they just add weight, visual interference. Alright, now I'm going to grab this piece, which is the last piece I did, and the first piece I did just to see if I kept color consistency. So I feel like these are a little brighter, and they are. So I'm going to brighten everything up here. Save those spots where I like the concrete throwing, showing through. Throwing shoe. It's throwing shoe! That would really excite my dog. Keep her busy for a while. I suppose I could always call my mother-in-law. Live, right? <laughs> <coughs> right, you're live on Secret Weapon. Be our fifth caller and win. Hmm. We'll have to do one of those sometime live on here, though. That sounds like fun. What is Mr. Justin Trivia Quiz? Yeah. What is my favorite color? <laughs> First person to get all five questions, right? Get a special model or something. Oh, I'm easily amused. How are you? You haven't noticed? No, not particularly. All right. Excellent. So here we are. Boom, 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 boom. We've got our texture. These will need to be uh, sealed again, but I don't actually have to do that before I start work on this side, because if I get a few chips here, which I expect to, I can super live with that. All right. But this stone, this stone, this stone, this stone, this stone has got to go. It's got to go. Now the stone, at least, should be easy starts white. I can't imagine she wants to be some other color. I don't know. Hmm. Could be. Could be. But let's see here. How am I going to do that then? How do I want that to pieces together here for a minute. How bad is the uh, edge seams on those? No, they fit together fairly well, actually. Okay. I'm not worried about that, because um, it's just block fitting. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Yeah. For block. And that's fine. That'll work out just great. Um, but, uh, no, the exterior is actually throwing me for a bit of a loop at the moment. Trying to figure out how I want to approach the uh, the color, and actually, I'm going to start with a bit of color harmony because, of course, I am.
These are going to be a much lighter version of the interior, finishing in white. Never put a Q-tip into your airbrush. So clean the paint from around the rim there on a regular basis, though, because of course I do. That is my paint spray. That's what I was hoping to find. Now this piece, I get to choose the bottom, but I'm going to choose that it's here, uh, because that way all the bottoms are at the bottoms together. You see, which is why I get to do this. Work my way up here. Doing it from more of a vertical, though, um, than a zenithal angle. So I actually do want coverage, not just shadow and highlight. More Payne's Gray. Start the bottom. Get a little even coverage. Wow. That one quick. Line, nice and shadow here, right? Sorry, I know that one's off the uh, camera for you. And I'm going to get kind of around the door here. I really like when I'm doing a uh, light stone, that combination of Payne's Gray and the uh, flesh tone. All right, and now, let me see, there you are. This is a color of uh, ink I use so often I keep the big bottle around, and that is Antelope Brown, which is going to be the start of my weathering. I'm going to do this over here, though. This is normally I decant this first. <laughs> it's pretty much up from the bottom. And that's our beginning of some dirt. It'll come back later. Later, I will very likely come over these with oil washes as well. All right, so in this case, I'm going to do these one at a time now. So I want to pay attention to my verticals and get a directional highlight. So I'm going to start with this one because it's still here. So I'm coming down from the top pretty much. And 
what that should do is give me that nice light wall without losing all my color. I want a little heavier. Be a little lighter all over. Once it started white, should bring it back somewhat to white. See? But we still get all those nice colors under there that'll really pop once we get uh, some oils on here. Do that as washes. Should be able to get to that today. I don't know. No idea when I'll run out of steam. <laughs> but that's pretty much what we're going for at this point. I either get too hungry or too tired. See, we still get our color in there. And our shadows. We're good to go. The rest is detailing. The oil washes will make a big difference. But let me see what else I can do first. Because my uh, Mona Lisa is out in the garage, I didn't think about oils today. My oil's in here. So let's see where we are. We've got some of those white spots here where things came off, and that's fine. We'll seal that. But here's our exterior now. So far, is our interior versus the. Uh, plain white frame we had in initially so that now as we put this together it is definitely a piece with a lot more visual interest and it gives us an opportunity to detail the interior because of course I know at some point my mother-in-law is going to want to do that and hopefully we can do it together because I really would love to make some posters and whatnot for this so this is we're actually creeping in on the stopping point only because at that point I'm going to need to speak to her. Um, I don't want to do the roof yet, uh, but this will be how that works, except for that part. This goes this way. Yep. Settles on. Uh, and of course we'll have our sign up at the top. And I need to find out uh, what kind of sign that's going to be, so I know what kind of mask to cut. So let's see, I need to do some masking. I need to do some color questioning. Uh, I think just about the only thing I can do without input is probably those oil washes. Uh, but let me look before we dig in something else out of the garage. Am I grabbing the monolith? You know where it is? Yeah. Cool. So she's going to grab that, and I'll talk a bit about the weathering here. Um, I'm going to start with the oil washes, which actually means I need to, well, I don't need to lighten this up. I can lighten it up afterwards if I feel the need. Uh, something to remember when you're doing weathering, particularly when you're working with oils, is that it's going to knock your color value down a couple of points easily. Um, yeah, which is a problem. So if you start with a traditionally dark Sherman tank, uh, it's going to wind up dark brown, I mean, it's just going to wind up so much darker. Uh, which is why when you look at some of the color modulation examples out there, um, even from great names like uh, uh, Mia Menes, uh, Rick Lawler, uh, Ian Hamilton, John Tolscher, um, yeah, Spencer, all those guys. Um, ah, I could go on. Uh, I'm a huge fan of all of those names. Um, mostly. Uh, their, their color modulation examples, uh, some of them look comic. 
Um, I use one of those in my light color composition class as an example uh, and point out that although it looks comically overdone, the moment you put weathering over that, again, particularly oils, it's going to knock that color down dramatically. So the finished result will be more uh, closer to what you were looking for. Um, so keep that in mind with oils. In the case of the rock, uh, I'm not sure what color it's going to wind up. Um, chances are good I'll come back and pick out a couple of rocks. In fact, I'll do that now while Emily's uh, looking for the Mona Lisa. Because uh, I'm guessing, it turns out she actually didn't know where it was. She's still out there, poor thing. So let me grab a couple of these rocks. Give them a different color. Well, it's not where it was last time. Okay. Uh, it's actually a one gallon jug, um, and it should be right next to uh, the table there. Uh, like the laundry table in yeah. my smoking area. Oh, well. It's not there? If not, okay, I'll run out in a second. Thank you. Well, I'm going to mess up all her values, but I need my light over here. And I'm using the handle wood here because, um, again, that'll help with some color harmony. It, it's very similar to the interior color, uh, and at least in a similar color range. And, uh, you know, having some matching color between the interior and exterior is a good thing. Uh, but this also helps integrate with the uh, um, signage on the roof. Oh, good, you're not a wash. Oh, no, you were a wash. Take dark wood here. Oh, dark iron. That would look weird. Found it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot. I only buy it in the gallon containers, though, usually. I used to have one small one that I kept in here, so I didn't have to worry about going out to the gallon every time, because I don't like keeping a gallon in here for uh, whatever reason. Perhaps it's a small part because I keep thinking I'm going to get out the canvases out there sometimes. Don't laugh. I could. I can paint anytime I want. Okay, now. I, I, I believe you, but I think that I would end up scheduling a stream first. Yes. Yeah, I did talk about paint along with Bob Ross, man. Get the Bob Ross channel involved. Because there's an official Bob Ross paint along channel, but nobody. Uh, hosts it, curates it, anything. But that's on Twitch. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Be the Bob Ross guy. And everyone can watch as my paintings really flow. <laughs> Man, I can't paint like that guy. I do abstracts. Mostly rust studies. Sure, anyone out there is shocked, shocked that I've been painting rust on canvas for decades. You have a thing for rust? I could never believe that. My wife is the one who pointed that part out, and I did think that was pretty funny. She's like, actually, remember you were painting rust on canvas when we met. Like, oh, yeah. It might be an obsession. There's a chance. I'm going to blow there. I'm going to blow them. I'm going to blow dry this real quick. Don't do that. Man, I need some chicken nuggets. I was kind of thinking chicken. Yeah. Because you had said uh, finger licking good earlier, and I was, that made me want pot rice. Which, sure, why not? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably thought, hmm, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't like them, but I could go for some Popeyes more like that. Wasn't finger looking good Popeyes in this phrase? No, that's Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh. Well, that explains it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can, KFC, it's finger looking good. No. But, uh, yes, I prefer Popeyes over KFC. That's fair. That's fair. I haven't had Popeyes in years. 
it's on the other side of town. Well, when I worked on the other side of town, it was pretty much in our parking lot. But that's Citrus Heights, Ranch Cordova. No, that's over by me. Or not Ranch Cordova. Oh, what about you? Okay. All right, I got some paint on there too thick. And I'm not going to sit here and wait all day for it to dry, so I'm actually going to grab a Q-tip. Out of there a bit. Gregory suggests making a paint along with Bob Ross as a mini convention event. Hmm. Yeah, I was always sad that uh, uh, we didn't have Iron Painter because I always wanted to do that at a con. Like, you know, an elimination thing with prizes. And... Your weapon is a brush made of jam waffle hair. <laughs> I don't want knock it. I've used it while it was still attached to his head. <laughs> what? You don't just sit next to your friends sometime, let them spin up their hair, lick it for you so you can paint? Uh, no, I have not yet done that. All right, well. um, Jess, if you could grow your hair out a little bit longer, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that next con. <laughs> hey, just ask Jen. He'll play along. All right, so now I'm going to do some oils. And I said that my oils are in here, so watch me be wrong about that. I am mostly wrong about that, but man, I have a lot of product in here that I need to paint. Yes, boxes did. and boxes of product to paint. It's a good thing I'm working on this instead. <laughs> all right. So I don't have all of my colors in here, but let's see what we have. We have some uh, brown. That'll be good. Some ochre. That's good. Uh, ooh, raw sienna will be good as well. I'm actually going to get the bright yellow in here. Uh, Gregory says that uh, Historicon has a Iron Chef mini diorama contest. Nice. And the black as a maybe. I may not use all of these. Let me see what I want to do. Which historical is definitely a show I've wanted to go um, to, so that would be good excuse. So rather than do this as a wash, uh, initially I was going to apply each of these as a wash. What I'm going to do is a dot uh, filter. Um, I would like my white for that. Okay, do you know where the oil paints are? Nope. Uh, under that table in the Raskog. Grab a handful, as long as there's white. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what I'm going to do is a dot oil filter. Uh, so I'm actually going to decant uh, some thinner. This is what happens when you have no idea which twists and turns a project is going to take until you're underway. Also, I need to go ahead and bring all my oils in here for good, because I'm not getting to canvas again in the near future. <laughs> not going to happen soon. All right. Unless somebody wants to commission a painting. I like to do pitches. At least try pitches. I like to have a lid. Okay, you stay there with my hand on you while I locate the lid that I just set down. Ah, on top of the paints. All right. So I'm going to do a dot oil filter. And what that means is that I need to go over here and get some Talcon brushes, which this counts. And this counts. We've been talking about it for a long time and debating uh, doing a brush line of our own. Uh, it just makes sense. But I would actually want to do Talcon instead of um, Good Sable in part because it's uh, easier to get, more reliable, lower price point. They make really good Talcon brushes. Uh, but also so that you can use them for both oil and acrylic, whereas uh, well, Sable brushes don't play as nicely with this stuff. All right, so a dot filter means that I'm going to create filters on the table by starting with dots and then filter it by blending it together. I'm thinking she did not blend my oil paints. Everything out there is apparently hiding from Emily. Brush. Get my yellow ochre. Any luck? She's bringing in the whole cart. Well, that's one way to do it. 
Well, the good news is there's no white in here. Ha! What the heck did I do with my white oil? I have no idea. Yeah, but I have to ask you. We're both in trouble, right? I also figured more light would also be helpful for me to be able to just quickly look through and confirm that there's no white, but... Yeah, it should be a giant tube. You'd think. No, I mean, there should be a giant tube. It might still be my wheel. It's fine. It's fine. Don't, don't go back. It's one I, I can live it out. Hey, I'm your gopher. I can go get no, stuff. I appreciate it, but... It's be a little oily, but that's all right. Filter that down in a minute. So it looks like a mess now. It's going to look like a mess later, but it's going to look like a nice mess later. Let's see what else I have over here. Can't go anywhere without some fair tall green. Whew. Too oily. Emerald green. All right. There we go. The last but not least, I want another color in here. I want another color. Oh, there we go. Cadmium green. Now with more cancer. Mm. Some light green in here. Let's put it on the bottoms. And now, we make it not suck. I don't know. I think you you got something going on there. Realistically aged. <laughs> it's moss. <laughs> oh, God. It's probably for sale somewhere. Woo! Making a mess with my Mona Lisa. So another thing to remember when you're doing uh, t using techniques like this. Um, the beautiful thing about the oils is that I have a very long time to work with them, as evinced by the fact that I am still sitting here without any concerns in the world about having big ugly splotches on my boards. Um, the water-soluble paints don't give you that flexibility, they give you a few minutes. Um, your next best bet is actually uh, enamels. Trust me. <laughs> and uh, that gives you much more working time as well. Uh, not as much as the oils, uh, but you can actually technically come back and fiddle with for days. One of my big two inch chippies in here. Of course not. A little too much oil in this case. I have to wipe some of that off as I go. But you'll see how I start to stipple it and blend it together. We'll wipe a lot of this off. It's putting big splotches. It's a little heavy for me. But it starts to blend weather those recesses the depth and color and shadow and way too much oil paint so we'll wind up wiping a lot of that off but I'm gonna get to all of my other ones and see if that's true everywhere put it all in one run if I need to periodically I'm scraping my brush putting fresh there Much too much oil everywhere. I thought I would need more than I would for this big surface because of course I'm accustomed to doing tiny vehicles in which case I use an I actually use an ought to brush to go ding 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 all over the surface. I don't normally do big pieces like this. Big walls like this I should say. So I seriously over applied and that's all right. There's a cure. And again, what this does is take the colors that you'd want to weather it with from its environment, blend them together a bit on the surface, and create a translucency, which in my case, I'm not going to get that translucency because I've got like a half inch of oil paint on top of each of these. And I'll have to clean up a bit. Okay, I'll have to 
しかないわ。On a long list of reasons, I have a roll of paper towels within reach of my desk at all times. The other might be because I'm accident prone. I tend to spill things. I like it's not accident prone, I'm spill prone. All right, so the bad news is this still looks like crap. The good news is we'll fix it. And there's not much to it. For the moment, this is what I want. I just wanted about 5% <laughs> of that coverage. So I'm gonna take this towel get in here and wipe us up a bit. Yeah, that's going to leave behind a lot of coverage. Well, that's right. I still plan to come back with the black wash in a few minutes to do all the panel lines. So that has definitely left us green. That filter gets really good coverage on here. So I'm effectively going to wind up starting over here in a second. So I thin all this green out of here. Take all the back of this, but that's fine. Those white chips are actually desired. They're a feature, not a bug. I think that that's it. Huh. I'm actually joining the chorus of people that are upset about the change to feed the people. They're like, oh, this is a bug we fixed. And we're like, wait, that was a bug? We all thought it was this awesome community thing. We're like, hey, if I beat this quest, everyone in the game gets special food that gives you a 5% XP bonus for an hour. Wow, cool. So, you know, people regularly did that community event and gave everyone on the map at the time that awesome food. And Bethesda's like, yeah, we can fix that. I'm like, wait, unfix it. Just grab me another sock, please. Uh, bottom drawer right there. Yeah, it was supposed to live under my desk, but you can definitely see why it's not going to now. Yes. There's just no... No, I could tell that when you were using it the last time I was here, and it yeah. actually was under there. And you're like, that's not going to last long. <laughs> All right, so I'm back in here with some thinner. Trying to clear some of this out. Get my stone colors back. Now I'll still have some of that weathering color, but I might want to wind up doing another dot filter. Because that serious over application really did just goop this wall. Now I'm not unhappy with the color results right now, but there's no particular weathering to speak of, and that makes me sad. Of course it does. See, it's good, though, that it didn't go right the first time, so you can show how to fix it. Yeah, and that's the case with the oils. I mean, you can see, you can just pretty much rub them off. Now, I've taken off the gray I put here, but that's also not a problem. Even if I rub this down to the original plastic, it's not going to be a problem for me, because, hey, that original plastic is white. So I can let that do some of my highlighting for me, which is pretty much what I'm doing now. That's why I'm being so aggressive with the sock. Just like I said, I like the effect that's given me. And I'll come back and do some more oil filter over the top of that later, but right now. Certainly better than that. Oh my gosh. So much over application. Another fun point to remember is that Mona Lisa does not smell. <laughs> that does not mean it's good to have it in a room for an extended period of time. I guess what I'm saying is when I pass out, you'll all know why. Well, let's be fair, I'll pass out first. I was gopher, I'm a canary. <laughs> yeah, there's a chance that I do have some tolerance to the... I wouldn't say tolerance. Some, uh, I may be accustomed to the uh, Mona Lisa fumes. 
Which, you know, that's not how I get cancer, though. I know when I got cancer. I got cancer breathing fire one day. Not even for a show. We were just practicing and showing off. And I swallowed a whole lot of kerosene. Still better than my partner. Uh, at one point, uh, we could hold enough fuel in our cheeks to do four to six blasts, depending on the size. Or one really big one. Um, yeah, two big ones. Yeah, if you're doing one, you'd want less fuel. But we were doing a show. We were hired to perform outside a rave. And uh, in his case, uh, he was doing the big blasts, or little blasts. And on the very first one of those, um, he got a big drop instead of a fine mist. And it came and it landed on his chin. Now, we had spotters, one on each end of the stage with damp towels. And he's got a damp towel in his pocket, just a little hand towel, just for those little things that happen like that. So what does he do? He goes, oh. He opened his mouth. In my case, I had something go wrong and a big drop landed on my chin. And I went, and I swallowed all the rest of it. I'm not sure which one of us made the right choice. The longer you uh, stick around, the longer, more episodes you watch, the weirder my life will be, I promise. All part of the subscription. Yeah, I'm living a very unusual life. Full of joy and joyness and adventure. Adventure. We're on a bridge, Emily. A magical bridge of joy and friendship. Emily. 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 Emily, Emily, Emily. I hope the viewers at home can feel how much of a face palm I have going on at the moment. We're going to Candy Mountain. Come with me to Candy Mountain, Emily. All right, so we are back to kind of neutral. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, Forever kind of neutral. <laughs> I uh, do like the direction that the weathering took, but it is still a bit heavy handed. Like we've got this stuff in here. And I'm going to fix it with the uh, black wash at some point. Uh, but I'd actually like to come back and readdress the stone for a minute since I goofed this just so incredibly badly. Um, hey, you want to wear us lunch? Why don't you? I'll hand you the phone. Sure. It's almost one. We got to eat. Uh, make sure it goes on the work card. <laughs> All right. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. How am I going to fix this? Well, I'm going to fix this with an airbrush like I normally do. <laughs> I'll put some more uh, white over the top of this. Very gently. And then we'll come back with maybe some more... Uh, less dramatic... Uh, dot uh, filtering. See, the rock does have a lot more depth now. It's just not how I intended to get there. Or what I want. <laughs> so I'm still going to keep working. Especially as a gift, it's going to have to meet my expectations.
All right. Let's try some dog filters again without sucking. All right. So, back to colors. I do want a nice dark green. I do want a nice dark brown. You want a uh, chicken tender? Or you want something else? Chicken tender sounds great. And an ochre. And an ochre? <laughs> <laughs> I need chicken tenders and an ochre. If you want to eat that? And one ogre. Off menu order. You want a Coke, Diet, or Sprite? Uh, no. Is no one at Ants except Alonzo? Or are they doing one of these places that's like, buy a meal? It's pretty much buy a meal, yeah. All right. Uh, they have lemonade? Uh, no, they have Coke, Diet Coke, and Sprite. <laughs> All right, why don't we get a Coke so you can have another Coke? Sounds great. Yeah, I didn't think you'd be sad about that. So you can see I'm being much more reserved on my application of color. Fries, rice, coleslaw, green beans, mashed potatoes, gravy, or red beans and rice. Thank you, Popeyes. Um, mash and gravy, man. Yeah. That sounds great. I'd go for some mash and gravy. Uh, do you want regular or spicy? Chicken. Spicy, give me that Popeye spicy chicken, so I can put it in my face. Boop boop. <gasps> I am still prone. Mona Lisa everywhere, but not on my lap. Boop boop. All right. Well, good news is the fumes from that will uh, make me think I'm doing a great job. It's what I get for being distracted by lunch. But come on, spicy chicken, regular chicken, these are important decisions you have to make in the process of a long build. All right. Remind myself to uh, empty my trash can in just a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's all over the desk. Look at that. All right. And that's why I decant a tiny little bit. Boop, boop. Let's decant a tiny bit more and focus. All right, these three brushes all the clean, clean glare. There you go. And I was doing the green. I managed to knock over the thing. <laughs> Very little of that green, which got so overpowering, of course. Oh, it felt amazing. But sometimes pain in my butt. Boom. If I were a lid. I'd hope to be as smart as that screw on one because. Uh, Which part is the company one? Do you remember the expiration? Uh. Yeah. I don't remember the expiration. Okay, you're right. Hey, you know what? It's not on here. That's good. Well, that's fine. I'll do my thing. I'll get lunch. We're not going to take the time to put that card on there. Oh, no. Deal with that later. I can always submit a reimbursement receipt to myself and authorize it. Mistake last time. Get out of there. All right. This time I should have a reasonable amount of oil paint. Emphasis on should and me. Wish us luck. Here we go. All right. Brush thinner. Have another sock, please. You. Now 
now we're getting that color and the translucency I was talking about. Blending these together, creating a weathered look across the model. That's better. That's more like it. Real heavy on this side, so I'm coming in very gently, wiping some of it away. Boom, big improvement. Uh, it'll look a lot better too when it's dry, because uh, at the moment the gloss actually um, alters the appearance of the color a lot on camera. So I'm gonna set this one aside. Start this one. Yeah, pieces this big. I wish I'd gone out and grabbed a one of my two-inch chip brushes. I'd have to explain that, though. Hey, how about that? That's right, I brought the rice stocking. Yeah, you brought in the whole cart. <laughs> the whole pile of these that actually exist for terrain and uh, canvas prep. Green went really heavy on this one again, too. All right. But I like it. That's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. The mic starts to pick up my stomach. We have to quit. Since you're uh, closer, could you close the blinds a little bit? It's getting to be that time of day. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, if anything in this room is going to make you miserable, it's me. Here we are. Obviously, on something like a, <laughs> a vehicle, I would not uh, be wiping off the surface. Say that now. Next week. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. And that green really goes a long way. Yeah. Tiny little bit on here, and it just overpowers everything. So there's the problem. The big problem is that little green, which should not surprise me. But I'll use that as a green background instead of going over this again and again and again and again. For now, I'm just going to let that be green. I need to steal it anyway to steal the interior as well. And again, you see what I mean about those spots chipping off now. Don't make me sad. I can even come in and encourage a bit here and there. But don't want to be too heavy because I want to keep some of that texture. But yeah, you get that nice battered concrete look where it's kind of plastered over and not in great shape. All right. I need to let this round dry. That leaves me the wood. Oh, the sidewalk. Leaves me the sidewalk. Hmm. No, I got nothing. Without the white oil, there's nothing I would want to do to that. So I'm just going to want to do this gray and chipped and weathered. Now, I don't have anything for that. I'll actually cut some notches out of this. 
I think, folks, we may be done for the moment until I have an opportunity to come back to you uh, with the final color choices from my mother-in-law and uh, prepare to do the details, uh, such as the uh, calendar I want to do on the inside of the wall and all of that, um, so that I've actually got those uh, produced, uh, or at least uh, the basic components print out, so that I'm ready to produce them for you, uh, rather than asking you to join me for a trip down uh, Google land while I look for the right images to do for uh, you know the posters up uh, inside the shop there. Uh, yeah, um, there could even be furniture for that matter. Uh, Hopefully something simple, but if she wants a little service counter, I can make that happen too. So, yeah, here we are. I will uh, bring these out for the moment. Show the components that we really got to. Uh, first, uh, added interior walls ooh, to all existing pieces. Oh, nice. Got some of that black in there too. I will uh, take some photos of all this for the Instagram. Yep. Well. And uh, we can knock the piece together for the moment, too. It won't be finished. but uh, So we added interior walls. We built the interior walls, uh, cut and painted them. Doink. Uh, painted, oil washed poorly, oil washed properly, <laughs> or uh, dot filtered properly, rather. Um, and you got to see the uh, secret weapon weathered wood trio in action to create this really great piece, uh, piece if I say so myself. I'm very happy with how that turned out on both sides here. Uh, I want to do the uh, black oil wash on here. I'll actually come in uh, and do it here. Uh, before I do that, though, one of the things I'm going to do on this piece, uh, specifically on the roof specifically, uh, is painted satin. Um, I'm going to put uh, a gloss uh, or excuse me, a satin enamel varnish over the top. Uh, living in California, I'm spoiled that I can use enamel rattle cans year-round. And even if I shouldn't be using it, well, Secret Weapon used to live in my garage, so it's insulated and we have an industrial venting system out there. Um, so I, I'm spoiled. Uh, so I would hunt this with a satin. And the reason I'm going to do that is it's important to remember, uh, and I know I've probably mentioned this in previous episodes, but it is very important to remember that your different varnishes also have different functions. Uh, for instance, if you're going to be doing decals, even on a rough surface like this, I recommend doing a gloss coat, the decal, microsol, whatever your solutions are, and then another gloss coat. Uh, because that means that whatever rough texture is in the plastic is now gone. Um, it's going to slide in more easily, scoop more easily, um, get into these recesses more easily. And it's the same thing with uh, uh, washes, particularly uh, oil washes and things like that. Um, any wash really, but uh, uh, it makes oil washes kind of like a magic at that point. Um, enamel to a lesser extent, but still true. Um, where because of that satin surface, it's going to just flow right off of the uh, top and just right in between these cracks for me. Um, it's one of the easy ways to do panel lining as well. And yeah, that's what we've got. One of the things I'd love to see in the comments, folks, if you're up for it, is ideas on what the interior uh, should contain. Uh, what would you expect to find in an old... Well, not too old. Um, service shop. So in this case, it's a gas station. The mechanic is next door, so we don't need all the mechanic stuff. Clone Fox suggests a couple of old car seats for a customer waiting area. Mm. I can do that, too, because I've got my um, 124th car stuff. I'm, I'm sure I've got some extra seats. Um, I'm sure I've got a bunch of extra car pieces. <laughs> Actually, uh, that's a great suggestion. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so far I'm thinking a couple of seats, um, the checkout counter, of course, a register, uh, maybe a magazine rack, selection of candy. You could have some real fun with the magazine rack. Different little joke magazines in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Secret weapon, your guide to modeling. It'll be the only magazine in the in the queue. <laughs> well, no, that's on the counter. Somebody's got to buy it. Hey, uh, you folks will be the first to know we've uh, finished the designs for a set of bases similar to the um, Silent Halls bases uh, so that we can have a, a set of three. It'll be a Ruined Temple, Silent Halls, and Imperial Halls. Uh, but all of those Latin phrases <laughs> are uh, very real and very goofy and mostly about how great these bases are. <laughs> um, so you guys will know our, our fun little story here, our fun little secret. Uh, yeah, and I'll figure out how the roof is going to go um, by taking another look at uh, the other pieces there to get an idea for the environment. The roof's going to stay pretty simple, though. 
because they don't do a lot there. I'd rather stick to the uh, uh, building itself. Fall down! Yeah. Yeah, that is very much what I was looking for. That's enough green for me that now when I go over the top of that, I will be happy. But not so much that it just looks green. Cool. Any last minute uh, questions or anything else that we can cover real quick before, uh, well, we wind down and get ready to finally eat some lunch? And I do hope you'll turn in uh, next week for the detailing on this. Uh, wasn't going to be a two-week project, but of course, once I realized that detailing all needs to be researched, uh, well, we'll do this twice. And uh, yeah, that can include scratch building all of those wonderful details. Uh, gives me an opportunity to talk to the audience about uh, building with plastic card, designing pieces like that, getting your scale right, uh, tools for scale uh, design, like scale rulers. Um, that will actually give you, where's my G scale? HO124. So here's my 124 scale. Uh, Charles suggests a small shelf of uh, snacks and an old school Coke machine. Oh, an old school Coke machine. Um, yeah, that'll be a trick. I can do that. I can do that. Why not? Oh, crazy. Old school Coke machine. Man, if I do that, though, I'm going to have to make a mold. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to want more than one of those. Hey, that's why I have a mold now for uh, my little dashboard Jesus at 124. So it's Buddy Christ doing the whole thumbs out thing. It's great. It's in a bunch of my car projects now with huge thanks to Chris Borer of Borer, Borer Miniatures uh, for knocking that out of the park for me. That's a really incredible piece. Um, so much detail on, on the tiniest little sculpt I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's great. And anything else? Are we all good here? Uh, we seem to be caught up. We're all caught up. Well, folks, thanks again for watching. This is Mr. Justin with Secret Button Miniatures. Please do remember to like and subscribe to the page so that you can keep up with us. And, of course, another reminder that if you are on the PlayStation 4 network, please hit me up. I would love an opportunity to game with you. Uh, right now, I'm going through Fallout 76 for the most part. Um, and playing Beat Saber, which doesn't help you. But uh, <laughs> that's what I'll be doing. Thanks again, folks, and happy hobbying. Catch you next time.